Sydney's public transport is going through a serious growth spurt, with three major city-shaping metro lines under construction and plenty of speculation of where future lines may go. Regular viewers of this channel know that we've been mainly focused on following the developments along the Bankstown line. Over recent months from outward appearances, development has slowed because most of the station works are basically complete. And Bankstown itself, well, the work has now commenced on station building surrounds, including the pedestrian plaza, linking the two station entrances, and the north and south of Bankstown. And it feels like we're getting close. And to the west, things have certainly picked up on the Sydney Metro Western Sydney Airport line. Gosh, that's a mouthful. With significant construction at St Mary's during October, as an example, where you can see on the day I visited, there were stairs and I guess escalators being craned into position. But in this video, let's change tracks and have a look at Sydney Metro West. I'm Marty and welcome to Backtracks. Once open, the line will be 24 kilometers long and it will be fully automated and fully underground, running in twin tunnels for its entire length from Hunter Street in the CBD of Sydney, Australia to Westmead in the West with nine stations. And it has a stabling and maintenance facility to be built at Clyde. It will use similar rolling stock to that being used on the Metro Northwest and Bankstown line. So let's take a look at each station traveling from the city out to Westmead. Let's start at Hunter Street. The start of the line in the city is currently in Hunter Street, which is basically wedged between the Wynyard Railway Station and Martin Place. And it's often been talked about this will create a mega train station where you'll be able to walk continuously between the three stations. Hunter Street will be the only CBD station on the line. And as I just said, interchanging with other Sydney Metro and Sydney train services. There are two separate above the ground construction sites. West, on the corner of George and Hunter Street, just adjacent to the Sydney Light Rail Lines 2 and 3 and Wigan Railway Station. And then there's East, just a bit further up Hunter Street. The platforms themselves have been mined. So what you can see at ground level are primarily the station entrances, which will later feature some very tall office towers as part of the overstation development. From what I could see, they're around 200 metres high or about 51 storeys high. One interesting fact, part of the station's underground connections will reuse the Hunter Connection, a tunnel that was built in the 1930s as part of the original Wynyard Station Works, which sits approximately 20 metres below George Street. Leaving Hunter Street, the line heads west under Darling Harbour to Piedmont. To service what I've often said is a quite difficult to get to part of Sydney via public transport. And where I'm filming here, you can see there's two large acoustic sheds which dominate the area on both the east and the west entrances. And as I said, like Hunter Street, this is a mine station. There were six tunnel boring machines in total used on the Sydney West Metro and the last two, Ruby and Jesse, left Piermont in September 2025 on their 1.1 kilometre journey to Hunter Street Station. Both are expected to break through later this year in 2025. TBM Jesse's a little bit behind but well on the way. The next stop, heading west, is the Bays, which is a metro station between White Bay and Roselle. And the station's being built in an area with significant industrial and transport history. Dominating the site is the former White Bay Power Station, built to power the requirements of the expansion of the Sydney tram and rail network in the early part of last century. That power station closed in 1983. The new Bays Metro station will provide the Balmain Peninsula with passenger rail for the first time since the trams stopped going there in November 1958. And it had a metro planned once before in early 2008. The New South Wales government announced plans to build a metro line between the northwest suburbs of Sydney and the CBD, and that was known as the North West Metro. Finally, Balmain is getting a train station. And from here, it's a pretty much straight line through to Five Dock. The new Five Dock metro station is on the Great North Road, right in the heart of Five Dock shops. There are two station entrances, and from what I could see, part of the station 
has been mined and part of it is via two separate station boxes. With an apartment building and the Great North Road still above the future station platforms. Five Dock is not close to any rail-based public transport, well not since the Abbotsford tram line closed, which used to run right in front of the station along Great North Road. And that closed at this part of the line in November 1958. This station and the 11 kilometres of twin metro tunnels between the bays and Sydney Olympic Park and the five new metro stations along that section of the line were built by Asiona Ferro Vial, who have now completed all the major construction at all the sites and has been handed back to Sydney Metro. So right now, nothing seems to be happening at any of these stations. And that's certainly the case at Burwood North. Burwood North will be located at the corner of Burwood and Parramatta Roads with entrances on both the north and the south sides of Parramatta Road. And the station will take the pressure off the existing bus network along Parramatta and Burwood Roads, as well as off Burwood Station. And like at Five Dock, there's not much going on here. The station box is complete and works are basically at a standstill while the next construction phase starts, which is building the stations themselves. Now Burwood North is basically halfway between the city and Parramatta, with it only being 10 minutes on the metro to Parramatta and 10 minutes to Hunter Street. I would say property will be going off there. And it looks like there's a nice sushi takeaway going to be built at the station. Next is North Strathfield Station, and that's adjacent to the existing North Strathfield Railway Station, with the new platform sitting right alongside the existing station. I visited here a couple of months back and again, it was just dormant, waiting for the overstation development to be started. The entry will be by a new entrance on Queen Street. After we leave North Strathfield, the line will then reach Sydney Olympic Park Station, which, as the name suggests, will service the Olympic Park District, the place where the Sydney Olympics were held back in 2000 and continue to host major sporting and music events like Oasis. Like the other stations, the station box is complete and there's little or no action at the moment. And I understand from industry discussion, there was going to be a major overstation development here, but they've not been able to find a builder or contractor to take that on. So at the moment, it's now planned to be a low rise construction. After Sydney Olympic Park, there's a very long seven kilometre distance between that and when we arrive at Parramatta. We'll come back to that later in the video. Well, Parramatta is probably going to be the second busiest station on the line after Hunter Street. It will serve as a major interchange with existing heavy rail at Parramatta and the L4 light rail. And of course, just for people living and working in Parramatta, which is Sydney's second CBD. Parramatta is an old city. It was actually founded the same time as Sydney in 1788. And it was the destination of the very first passenger train in Australia, which arrived there in September 1855 to Parramatta Junction. And boy, this is a huge site, basically a whole city block. And the overstation development appears to be a mixed use development of four large buildings, covering the equivalent of two city blocks, providing about 100 new homes, office and retail space, as well as a large pedestrian mall as its centrepiece. And from there, let's get to Westmead. And that's the end of the line as it currently stands. Westmead is a major health and education and research precinct. And it's currently ranked 37th busiest of around 300 plus stations in the broader Sydney Trains network. The new Metro platforms will be located on the southern side of the existing Westmead Sydney train station. Difficult to see what's going on here as the fence and the shed are covering up much of the action. But the station will provide a great link to Sydney trains and I'll dare say it become a major interchange station as people who come from the west, say from Penrith, St Mary's or from Richmond will likely hop on to the metro service because it's only about 22 minutes to the city from here. In earlier drawings, say from a couple of years ago, it looked like there was going to be underground link from the metro station through to the Sydney train station. But now that seems to have disappeared from planning because they talk about it simply being an overground link between the two. And it looks like tunnelling has been completed on this end, although I hadn't seen anything written about it in the papers. But it looks like both Betty and Dorothy have completed their journey according to the tunnel tracker website. 
So where will the train sleep? Well, the entire line will be managed out of the Clyde Stabling and Maintenance Facility, just south of Rose Hill Racecourse. It's quite hard to get a vantage point of the construction here at this facility, but you can drive along the M4 and get a bit of a glimpse, and it looks like the site is all ready and prepped for the facility to start being built. Included in the development on the actual main tunnel is the Rose Hill Facilities Building, which looks suspiciously like it could be another metro station one day. I'm just speculating. And talking of other metro stations along the line, some of the original plans included a station at Silverwater. And this would make sense, as the gap between Sydney Olympic Park and Parramatta is just over seven kilometres. And the average distance between stations on the M1 metro line is just 2.8 kilometres. And here I'm driving where it looks like the station would have been. But now tunnelling has been complete. It would be very hard to now build a station after the fact. Well, we made it and that about does it. So what an awesome undertaking. It's very exciting, but gosh, we have to wait another seven years till it's completed. The Brisbane Olympic Games will likely be on by the time this Western Sydney Metro line opens. And while the station boxes and tunnelling is pretty much complete, there is plenty of work to do on the stations themselves. And it looks like these are yet to start. So big undertaking to make the line and a big undertaking to make this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's the first one I've made on the Western Sydney line. And I've got seven years more of videos to make if I so choose. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into Australia's and particularly Sydney's new metro lines. See you later.